Okay, welcome to the Nibs World Wide Business Case Competition 2014. The consultant team presenting for Advanced University of Applied Sciences. The presentation will last 20 minutes. I'm the timekeeper. I will signal when there are 10, 5, 3, and 1 minute left. Please nod that you've seen the time. After the presentation, the judges will have 10 minutes for questions and answers. Again, I will signal the time, 5, 3, and 1. Please nod. You must stop when I indicate the time is up, even if you're not quite finished. I will now let the judges introduce themselves. After the introduction, you may begin. Okay, thank you very much. Um, my name is Morgan, and my team here represent the executive of the Tennessee Valley Authority, and I will let them introduce themselves. I'm Izzy O'Neill, and I'm in the project manager. My name is Greg Talent, I'm the business development manager. Guy Bridger from Finance. Okay, uh, we are very interested to hear what you have to say to us. So, if you'd like to introduce yourselves, and over to you. All right, welcome everybody to our presentation. Welcome, Morgan. Let me first introduce ourselves. To my right, this is Rutger. To my left, Bramad, Frederick, and myself, Florian. And today, we would like to give you a good solution for your current problem. First of all, we come from the Netherlands. We are Breda Consulting. And Breda, it stands for best recommendations because we operate excellent, detailed, and accurate. And this presentation is targeted at you, Morgan, at the Tennessee Valley Authorities. Let me first talk about our structure. We are going to begin with the key issue formulation, which is your strategic problem. Afterwards, the stakeholders' needs definition. Then an executive summary, which is our final recommendation. Afterwards, an internal and external analysis, which results in a short SWOT analysis in the end. Then we talk about how to increase your capacity, which is, of course, very important. Afterwards, we also talk about a shift from peak to a basic load, and we'll finalize the presentation with educating your consumers and a short recommendation in the end. So let's come first to our key issue, to your strategic problem and what you have to do. How can TBA, how can Tennessee Valley Authority satisfy the different needs of its various stakeholders best? So that's the strategic problem, that's the main issue you have to focus on, and we have a solution for that. In order to find a recommendation for this, we first have to discuss the stakeholders' needs. First of all, that's the supply of power to cover the increasing power needs. The market is growing by 1% every year, so you have to definitely address this problem. The two main questions are how to increase your capacity and how to finance your expansion. Secondly, a very important need for the stakeholders is a shift from the peak to the base load. So that's even more important for you as a company and for you as the vice president. Because in times like, for example, in the evenings, of course, more people use electricity and the big problem is you cannot store it. So that's why you have to find a solution for that. And we define the question, which pricing model should be used here? Last but not least for the stakeholders' needs, there is cleaner and more renewable energy is required. And the main question here is how can energy use efficiency be improved? So that's what you also have to address. After the short analysis of the stakeholders' needs, we come to our executive summary, which is the solution, our recommendation to your strategic problem. That is, we recommend to you to build six natural gas plants and secondly, to implement an awareness campaign to change the consumer attitude and behavior on solar energy and power usage. So those two are the main basic points of our recommendation, which you have to address. And this will be now explained in our analysis by my colleagues. Let me now hand over to my colleague, Rutger. Thank you. Okay, we did an uh, analysis, internal analysis, to see what, how is your business operating at the moment. Okay, you have a very uh, broad mission. Uh, you want to bring reliable uh, production and have a good pricing for your customers. Um, you also take into account the environment in which you're operating. So Tennessee as a landscape, there are some uh, drive problems with uh, shortage of rain, and you also want to try to address that problem as well. Um, and you want to seek uh, 
partnership with your local government. You also already have a big partnership with the US government as a whole, but also local government will be more and more important for you as a company. Then we looked at your current production, um, which is shown in this graph, in this diagram, sorry. Um, at the moment, you are producing 55% of your production is fossil fuel. Therefore, you have a big carbon footprint on, this, uh, yeah, on the landscape in Tennessee. Um, and for instance, the renewable sources um, and natural gas, which has a much lower footprint, are very limited. Uh, we also can see you have to buy 11% uh, more energy from competitors, because at the moment you can't fulfill the total need of the population. Further, we looked at your uh, AAA rating, which is a very good point, of course. Um, the main reason you have a AAA rate, uh, rating is that you are guaranteed by the US government. It will, uh, human gov the US government will back you up in, uh, in a financial crisis because you are too far, much of a valuable player to lose, to go bankrupt. We have power losses, etc., and we can't happen. It, it may not happen, so therefore, uh, guaranteed by the US government. Um, that results in your uh, high long-term debt ceiling. It's over, it's $30 billion. So um, that's the figure the US government is guaranteeing. Um, and you also have a good involvement in the green revolution. Um, you're still producing with a high carbon footprint, but you are willing to change. Um, but you have to do that much more. For the external analysis, I'll give the word to Brahmat. Thank you. <coughs> For external analysis, we looked toward the DSTEP analysis. With the demographic, we found a lot of different incomes are in your operating area. There are also a lot of high incomes, but also some very low incomes where you have to take in consideration. And the electricity demand increases. We've seen a shift, but we saw an increase from 2.5% increase in electricity in the last 20 years. And this, like my colleague said, will continue to grow. 1% for the next 20 years. For economical, we see we are currently dealing with an econo economical downturn, so that's a big major issue, and also for the consumers, they have to deal with that. For social, we see that they, people are already calling for you that they don't want to increase in electricity rates. People are really anxious that, they're, uh, um, sorry, that they um, need to pay more, so that's why they hammer on that they don't want to increase. Also with technology, we see that there are a lot of technology developments, also in nuclear area, but also in renewable energy like solar power. Also we see an increase in environmental awareness. All around the world, people want to see environmental awareness that they're being planted and want to reduce our carbon footprint. With political, we see an uncertain political environment. So there's a lot of switch and dangerous things. For the SWOT analysis, to conclude our internal and external uh, analysis, we see a strong point, the AA ration, to get a good loan from the government. You are participating in the Green Revolution and you have a high debt ceiling of 30 million, like my colleague mentioned, and there's a re reliable source of power. For the weakness, we see unable to meet the energy demand for consumers, and you have a problem with the base of peak load management. So when, when the energy is used low, and peak, it's hard to struggle to keep it up. Opportunities, we see new technologies to use. Uh, we see energy saving programs to inform the consumers. Uh, there's a commitment to the NRC, so it's allowed to build more plants. And the time of use price model. At threats, we've seen an economical downturn. The volatility <coughs> in prices, so there's also a mean in production price to build plants. The legalization of legislation of the green energy and the unexpected fence. These were account up to 20% of the turnover. Okay. Now I'd like to give the word to Florian. Thank you, Bramad. Um, I will now address the question, how to increase uh, your <coughs> capacity. Um, first of all, there are two reasons why you should do that. As you can see, um, the demand increases, so the required capacity uh, would also increase um, from 2013 to 2017. And, um, in 2018, you will shut down uh, some of your coal plants, so this will increase the required uh, capacity uh, enormously. 
So your cur sorry, sorry. your current uh, capacity is uh, around thirty-seven point one eight eight and megawatt, and um, uh, as I've shown you, uh, that's not enough to cover the required capacity in the future. So uh, there are different alternatives and different power generating possibilities that we've listed in this chart. I want to show you, uh, for example, that uh, for a nuclear plant, a new nuclear plant, you need uh, $5.5 billion. It takes four years to build and uh, it produces a lot of uh, energy and uh, a yearly cash inflow. Um, on the other hand, um, there's coal, but you want to reduce that. So um, we don't consider this option further. Um, also due to the fact that the pollution is too high and uh, if you shut down some coal plants, it doesn't make sense to uh, build new ones. So uh, the options that are left are natural gas, wind, solar and nuclear. The wind and the solar um, alternatives, they produce uh, not enough um, electricity to cover the base loads during the, um, for the market. So that's why those two options can also be um, deleted. So uh, we further uh, analyzed now the nuclear and the natural gas um, power generation alternatives. So in order to do that, uh, we came up with this decision-making matrix, which compares uh, one nuclear plant to three natural gas plants, as then uh, the capacity uh, is nearly equal. So we took into account the construction costs, which I already said is 5.5 billion for the nuclear and 1.95 for the three natural gas plants. This is considerably lower, as you can see, and that's also why it uh, um, ranks higher uh, in the score. Uh, the next comparison point or weighing factor is the construction time. It's four year, years versus 2.5 years because you can build the natural gas plants um, simultaneously. So that's also a strong point for the natural gas plants. Um, the production capacity is nearly the same. So that's uh, roughly the same score. And the yearly cash inflow is, that's a positive factor for the nuclear plants because that's much higher uh, as you can see. So after um, analyzing those two options, we, came, uh, we decide that um, building natural gas uh, plants is the best for your business. Um, and you also have to take into account that uh, the environmental factor is much better for the natural gas plants. So a uh, short time planning for that is that uh, in 2013, 14 and 15, uh, you have to build those plants. We took half a year for possible delays uh, during the working uh, and the building process. So that's why we uh, calculated with three years building time. After that, so starting in 2016, you can um, start generating the energy with these plants. And if you look now at uh, this capacity graph, here's again the required capacity uh, graph that will uh, you will cover the required capacity until 2017 when building three plants as uh, mentioned below uh, above. So you can see that uh, your capacity increases but from 2017 on or 2018 when you shut down the coal uh, plants this won't uh, be covered anymore. And that's why we advise you to build three uh, additional natural gas plants from 2014 on. So at that time you will be building uh, six plants. So 2014 to 2015, uh, six plants are in the building process and they will generate um, energy one year later. So starting from 2017. So as you can see, this changes the graph and uh, you will be able to cover all the required uh, capacity uh, until 2019. Then, of course, the, uh, the, the uh, demand increases again and uh, you have to uh, continue building more plants. But we are just looking at this uh, major impact of the shutting down of the coal industry. So uh, the next topic will be the financing of those uh, plants. Just do it on the keyboard. Yeah. yeah, it's wrong. Well, for the financing, I still can <laughs> say something about that. We want to split the financing into a loan and in the government bond issuing for so 30 year bonds. And uh, this will be done, I think, around 50 to 50% uh, each. So taking up a loan and issuing the government bonds. 
Um, <laughs> continue. Yeah, sorry for that. Furthermore, uh, the financing also includes um, a marketing plan, um, but this will be discussed by my colleagues. And I, I hope the presentation will be yes. there. Yes. So. Yeah, we'll just pause for a minute while we okay. get the presentation. Thank you, Thank you. We will, of course, ignore this completely. Thank you. Not in my mind, that's all. I hope you understand that's not. Uh, the problem of our consumption. That's why Bill Gates is so rich. <laughs> They're made to break, aren't they? <laughs> In a way, you've got some thinking time, haven't you? Exactly. Yeah, we do. You could work this to your advantage. <laughs> Is the timekeeper allowed to tell us how many, at what point we pause? Yeah. How many times? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Not to use the clicker. Not the clicker? Because it might happen again because of the clicker. You never know. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, I keep this short because I already talked a little bit about it. Uh, we want to uh, split the investment in taking up a loan and issuing new 30-year government bonds. And uh, the, uh, the investment will be used for the new plant productions, so the building of the plants, and uh, the marketing costs. But this will be explained further by my colleagues, uh, Robert and Rick. Thank you. Um, the other issue we should address is shifting from peak uh, load to base load. Um, therefore, we uh, formulate uh, two options. The first option is implement a time of use pricing model. Uh, the time of use pricing model will be uh, will be done with uh, new meters, so people can uh, see if, if they use in the low peak, they get a cheaper energy, and in the high peak, the energies will be the prices will be higher. Um, the other option, therefore, is don't implement a time of use pricing model, uh, but start an awareness campaign. So. Uh, you don't shift from price model. Um, for option one, uh, there are some advantages and disadvantages. Um, if you do implement a price, uh, the 
pricing model, you'll see a great shift from peak to base load. Um, and you can, al you can also monitor the Pacific power usage during those peak and base load time. Um, and if the customer will adapt this uh, pricing strategy, it also will reduce the utility bill for the customer in the end. Uh, the disadvantages are that there is an image problem attached to it. Um, you have to implement new meters. Uh, they cost a lot of money um, and your uh, customers are poor. They can't pay them. So the image will contain, the image will be made of that you will subsidiate uh, high income people. And that's not a good, uh, good feel. Um, so the high cost for the consumer, again, like I said already, um, and people don't find it nice that you know that you collect the date, data uh, on their household habits. Uh, habit, sorry. So that's a big disadvantage. For option two, the awareness campaign. Um, we can create a small shift. We can't really monitor it. It's a disadvantage of it, but it's a small shift. So there is a shift. Um, and it's good for your company image because you'll be uh, creating awareness about use of energy, so you take your customer by hand and show them how to can reduce their bills at the end. The low monitoring usage, I already said that to you. Um, another dis disadvantage is it's time consuming. It will take a few years. Um, and there's a small group of stakeholders who don't like this at all. They don't think at the current uh, economy, they don't want you to put your money into those kind of uh, campaigns. We make a decision-making matrix as well. Um, you see we rank the uh, stakeholders very high because they have a lot of influence on you. Um, the campaign is the most suitable um, because of the disadvantages uh, of the stakeholders. Um, the conclusion should be start an awareness campaign to create a shift from peak to baseline. Roman will tell you about how we're going to do that. Uh, thank you. For the educator consumers, that's the awareness campaign. Our aim here for us is to change the consumer behavior on the long term so they'll be more energy efficient and that they look better at their base and peak times. Why are we going to do that? Just like I said, to change the load between that so there's a better capacity. And also, it reduces their electricity bill. That's why they um, better can go, uh, sorry, they decrease the electricity bill, whether it's, okay, sorry. It decreases the electricity bill, so they don't come with the complaints where they're already uh, talking at. And how we're going to do that? We're going to school, educate the children, and uh, going to uh, events and communities. Here we got a small timeline, how we're going to do that. So in year one, we're going to start already in the schools, outcomes are only five years. Children always leave on electricity, and that comes with high electricity bill. Then we start with the year one and two in the low incomes, going to the mid incomes and out to the high incomes. Also, we want to do uh, the benefits of the solar panels. Uh, the government has a subsidizing program, so people can buy the solar panels for lower cost. They are improved technologies, solar powers are better, use more energy. And nowadays, when there's unused electricity, you can sell it back to the uh, company, so to your company, with a premium price. This reduces the bill, that's why we want to amplify people to buy solar panels. All right, in the end, our key takeaways for you. Concerning the supply of power to cover the increasing power demands of your stakeholders, we advise you to build six natural gas plants, and in addition to that, we have a finance expansion plan for you. The second point is a shift from the peak to the base load. That's of course not completely possible, but we are starting with you an awareness campaign and to talk about usage behavior with your customers. Finally, the key takeaway for a cleaner and more renewable energy trend is the following. We advise you to educate people to use the solar panels and the natural gas is more environmental friendly than <coughs> neutral energy or for example coal. That is why we chose this again. Now, thank you very much for your attention. Um, we loved it to present in front of you. If you have any, got any, any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank, thank you. you very much. Um, okay. If we can start with some questions from the end, guy. Um, yeah, you mentioned um, you're keen to encourage people to use solar energy. Can you explain where you 
Yeah, uh, the way we wanted to do that, um, energy, uh, solar energy plants will take up a lot of uh, space, a lot of ground, a lot of acres to uh, fulfill the, the, the use, the, the level they can produce. But by um, encouraging people to buy solar panels they can put on their houses, they will, uh, they will produce their own electricity. So their own electricity will uh, make sure that their that would, their bill will be reduced by a subsidiary from the government that will be, the cost for the solar panels will be lower and also because the technology has improved solar panels can produce more now also during cloudy days um, and therefore um, yeah, the bill also reduces because they produce more and if they produce more than they actually need you already buy that at premium price back and you shift it to other customers that need more energy. So therefore we thought you could build your plan but it takes a lot of acres and we think by promoting the solar panels you also get it acres but not just on the ground, it's already on uh, housings and other buildings. Um, energy supply and all its issues is a long term business, yep. really. And uh, I'm curious, Yumi uh, worked it out to 2018, 2019. You know? I, I didn't see any figures to show me what might happen after that, you know, for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Have you considered that? Well, uh, the demand uh, is expected to increase by 1% um, each year uh, for the next 20 years. So that's uh, over the time uh, horizon that we've chosen. Um, but um, uh, you're, you're currently introducing uh, four, uh, in every four years one nuclear uh, production plan to, co to cope with the increasing demand. And we are advising you to build, uh, instead of one nuclear production plan, three new natural gas uh, plants in this four year. Uh, um, I don't see any projections moving beyond 2018. No, because there's, we expect it to be uh, just continuously grow by 1% and introducing another natural gas plant, uh, three not additional natural gas plants every four years. Okay. Con concerning the renewable uh, variable, we just uh, told you that you should educate your consumers about the solar panel thing. And the big disadvantage of producing them by your own is the very high costs and the very low cash inflow. And that's why we recommend to you to educate consumers to buy it on their own somewhere else and then you will profit from them because you buy the excess capacity which is produced by them. Okay. Uh, the solar panel for the people that have some power, how, how is it going to be cost for them? How are you going to suggest many students? Well, the te technology advanced very much in the last years. So people um, will get a lot of electricity out of it. And that's why we want to go to them, educate them of the high uh, no, profitability for, they, for them. They have the equipment to sell. Excuse me? For the equipment to sell, for they have access to it. Yeah. First they have, of course, they, they are starting their own solar uh, panel company, right? Um, so they use their own um, uh, solar power during those peak moments for the base load they will have to uh, have your energy so they you see the swift the, the swift from the load from the peak to the load so they will cover that so you immediately don't have to produce that much of a peak uh, energy anymore um, and by that sorry that peak is always at a certain level and if they produce much more energy of that because of the product development, um, you will, you can buy that premium back and shift it to other. Um, I think your question was how much uh, one of the panels will cost the uh, ah. customers, right? So uh, we advise them to buy those panels from an external supplier. So uh, we just tell them that uh, they be can benefit a lot from the, these panels, that we will buy their excess um, electricity back at a premium price. But we advise, advise them to buy the, uh, the panels themselves from an external supplier. Okay, can you uh, just talk us through some of the uh, risks associated with your 
strategy? Uh, perhaps you could talk about the external risks? Um, well, of risks course, you can, you can never exclude risks at all, but if you buy, uh, build such a plant, you know exactly how much it will produce. And that's why the, the risk is very, very low in this case, and we didn't consider it in our presentation. Because <coughs> you build the six plants, you produce the energy, and the risk of, I don't know, an earthquake is not that high to consider it in a 20 minute presentation for you. But we have other risks associated with legislation, with politics, with social issues around green exactly, yeah. yeah. How are those factored into your decision? Well, the, the risk is especially high concerning the legislation, for example, for nuclear and for coal plants, uh, because the uh, waste disposal, uh, the regulations are. Um, increasingly strict and for the natural gas plants uh, the environmental impact is uh, not as high as um, for those two uh, energy generating um, alternatives so the risk for legislation is lower for the natural gas production okay. and that's why we chose it for that. Okay. Other questions from my colleagues? <coughs> yeah, um, when you considered nuclear, was there any overriding factor that put you off? Of the nuclear uh, building? And yeah, I've seen your cost that. comparisons, yeah. which is very straightforward, as I understand. Yeah. Um, but we but thought, for example, no. Fukushima, <coughs> uh, you saw what can happen when if there is a, a destruction of such a plant. We think the impact on the, on the whole world is uh, too big um, to, to uh, support and that's why we think uh, building nuclear, uh, new nuclear plants are um, it's not the right decision. In addition to that, our focus in this presentation was on your stakeholders, so mainly on your customers. And we think we consider that your reputation for that is very important. And the reputation concerning the gas plants is a lot better than uh, concerning the uh, nuclear power plant, what we have seen in Fukushima. In the, long, in the longer term, um, just to probe a little bit, to find out a bit more about your, um, your decision making behind the finances, um, you've come up with some numbers, but um, just if you could give me a bit more information about what you think about the nuclear, because we've got a lot of nuclear power in play, and we, we don't have any problems with running nuclear power plants. Utilizing you know that as a resource and and, and uh, supplying it to our customers, apart from the peak load problems, you know that's something we have to manage internally. As stated in your mission, also you are uh, really looking at the local uh, environment as well, and uh, the wage disposal is a big problem for the nuclear plant. So uh, the derivative, I think, of uh, the uranium uh, is highly radioactive. And uh, you would have to find solutions for disposing of waste, which will increase your cost. And uh, that's a big factor for us to uh, not choose uh, for the nuclear plant. As this has to be uh, stored in, in the area where we operate. Very good. Thank you. Um, suppose, suppose customers don't go along with buying solar panels, um, you know, because maybe they can't afford it. Um, what, what's the contingency? Well, um, because you're really backed up by the US government, you think the, the subsidizing is very, very important for that. Right. But um, yeah, you can you can persuade your government to, to do that because they see they will get their environmental uh, footprint down. Houses will be their own uh, factor plants. Sorry, um, sorry, I lost my story. Um, <laughs> Expensive. Yeah, uh, expensive, of course. Um, also, the constant improvement of technology will make them uh, much more affordable as well. And you have, we have to uh, let the customers see that they will eventually uh, get their investment back and will make money in the future. Um, you know, we don't have a, a time frame for that because we don't know what the production costs of solar panels are at the moment. Our but educational plan is focused on the long run. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.